Hey y'all, Florida boy back with you. Okay, so the glue on this uh, popping cork has been set up for about, about curing for about 24 hours, a little more than that. And I've knocked off all the excess glue that had came out uh, uh, between the seams there and then hit it with uh, some light sandpaper. I think it was 220 just to kind of clean it up a little bit and get the excess glue off of it. So before I put my first coat of uh, epoxy on it, I'm going to install a couple of these little bass rattles. And uh, I like these things because water so dense, the noise just travels so much better underwater where <clears throat> you can shake these and barely hear them here underwater. Um, the noise is amplified and it, it, it travels quite a bit. So um, anyway, we're going to install two of these. I'm simply going to install them by hand drilling a couple holes, one in the front and one in the back. So when I lock this thing sideways, it'll have a little bit of that, that little bit of rattle, which, uh, you know, uh, fish are always attracted to. <clears throat> and so uh, we're just going to do that, put a little tiny spot of super glue on them, uh, embed them into the foam, and then I'll, I'll put my first coat of epoxy on it. So anyway, that's it. It's coming out good. I'm, I'm definitely happy with it so far. I think it's going to come out really cool. So uh, next step, install these uh, little glass bass rattles, and uh, then we'll move on from there. Peace. Hey y'all, Florida boy here. Okay, so I've got uh, my bass rattles installed. Uh, they are flush and um, hope y'all can hear that. So uh, got both those rattles installed and uh, re-sanded it one more time with 220. It's nice and smooth and getting ready to uh, put my first coat of uh, two-part epoxy on it, clear epoxy. It's going to do two things. It's going to harden this closed cell foam up uh, even more than it is. And uh, it's also going to give me a, a base to, uh, to paint on because <clears throat> I don't know how the, the styrofoam uh, would do uh, absorbing the paint. I have a feeling it, it would kind of suck in the paint even though it's a closed cell foam. So anyway, we're going to put that uh, two-part epoxy on it. And then uh, <clears throat> we'll let that set up, and from there we'll uh, we'll start to put some some color on this thing. So anyway, yeah, the uh, rattles went in. I know it kind of looks a little funny right there. Um, they're they are flush. I messed that one up a little bit, but once the epoxy's on, you won't see any of that. But anyway, uh, you won't be able to see those at all once this thing's painted and the epoxy's on there. So anyway. Um, yeah, again, uh, so far so good. Pretty happy with how it's turning out. Let me uh, let me get this epoxy on it. We'll get that set up, and then we'll be ready to start putting some color on it. All right, we'll be back with y'all in a bit. Peace. Hey, y'all. Florida boy back with you. Okay, so what we're going to do now is go ahead and mix up my two-part epoxy. I'm going to use the Envirotex light. Uh, I've not used it before, but... Uh, I've seen other people use it and uh, with, with pretty good results. So I just want to give you two quick tips, uh, a couple quick tips about uh, mixing up the epoxy. One is I just just took a marker and and marked the cup a little bit. It, it does have the the lines in it, but but they're clear and it just makes it a little bit easier to see when you're pouring it. And secondly, um, when you mix this stuff, uh, you know don't churn it up too much like you're you're making an omelet. You, you don't want it to get a lot of bubbles in it so you need to mix it thoroughly but but don't churn it up and, and get a bunch of bubbles in it because then you have to work it a little bit more when you put it on and then the third thing i would say is i just use these little cheap disposable hobby brushes but go ahead and pull on the end a little bit flick it around see if there's any loose bristles make sure they come out before you start uh, before you start applying uh, your epoxy so uh, we're going to go ahead and mix that up, put a coat on here, and then we'll, we'll be back with y'all in just a little bit. Peace. Okay, we've got a nice thick coat of epoxy on it now. We, we've got it spinning. We're going to let this sit for four, five, six hours. Uh, you want to keep it rotating like that so the epoxy doesn't, doesn't puddle up in one spot. It gets a nice smooth coverage this way. Um, I've got one of these disco ball motors. Uh, you can buy them on eBay or Amazon. I, I think I paid like twelve or fourteen dollars for it. So uh, it rotates about two and a half uh, RPMs. So uh, you can see it's rotating nice and slow, and 
Foxy looks pretty good. I think it's going to be the result I was looking for. So we'll let this thing sit here and on the rotisserie here for four, five, six hours, and I think we're going to be good to go. So we'll get back with you in a bit. Peace. Hey y'all, Florida boy here. Okay, I decided to use the jig skin, so I'm just popping cork instead of uh, using my airbrush. You know, I just haven't had the airbrush very long. I, I know I'm not very proficient with it yet. I, I've just used it just a few times, and so uh, you know, we'll 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 play with that uh, on some other projects down the road. And but uh, I, I wanted to go ahead and, and for the most part finish this thing up. But uh, in case you're not familiar with with jig skins, it's here they are. Here's some assorted ones that that I got online. You can you can check them out. They've got some YouTube videos out there. It's uh, jigskins.com, and uh, it's just like heat shrink tubing. If you y'all ever done any electrical work or uh, wiring, uh, especially on boats, anything outdoors really. But but uh, heat shrink tubing, it's it's very similar in that sense. You you cut it to length. Uh, slide it over your lure, uh, whether it's a, a new lure that you're making or an existing lure that you just want to recover, and then you dip it in some boiling water and it, it contracts around the lure. So ch check them out. I, I think it's I think it's pretty cool. Uh, saved me a lot of work, and uh, I mean I think I'm gonna like it. They, they look pretty durable. I mean I'm sure get a get a saltwater fish that's got some sharp teeth he's, he's probably going to puncture it but uh, the good thing about that is you can you can peel it off or, or or use another one right over the top of it so we're gonna we're gonna go with this for now and uh, we're gonna see how that works uh, right now I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, put the hooks on it and uh, get it ready to go and and then the only thing left after that is go catch some fish with it so uh, we'll get back with y'all in a little bit y'all all right i got my split rings and, and my treble hooks installed i'm using the uh, vmc walnut uh, uh 4x hooks uh, yeah i know they're they're a little big i probably could have went one size down one size smaller but I, I'm, I'm not really worried about it they're not gonna catch each other and, and be able to foul uh, i'll fish this both in fresh and salt water uh, largemouth bass have no no problem uh, getting that, and uh, most saltwater fish that uh, that I fish for will, will have no problem getting those hooks in their mouth. So, um, in, in addition to that, it's going to add a little bit of weight to it, uh, which to me the the more the merrier. I think it's it's going to actually be perfect. I'll reweigh it here in a few minutes. The only thing left I have to do now is uh, uh, I'm going to put some feathers on the back here and uh, cover this hook up and, and what I'll do is I'll probably wrap them a little bit long and then trim them off right behind the hook. I don't want them too long because especially uh, in saltwater applications uh, you know the fish will short strike. They always try to take the tail off in the first bite and then they'll, they'll come back and once the once the fish is disabled they'll, they'll come back and and, and, and bite it the second time. So uh, we'll go ahead and try to wrap something on there just a little little feather, little tail on the back there, and uh, weigh it, and then that's it. The only thing left after that is uh, go catch some fish. All right, there it is, all done. I don't think it looks too bad. Uh, in fact, I think it looks pretty good. <clears throat> so the only thing left uh, left to do now is weigh it. So uh, I got this, it's nylon. It's, it's, like, a, uh, it's like a nylon uh, material that I cut and tied on there and uh, let's let's go ahead and weigh this thing see what it weighs all right there we go 1.25 ounces um, with braided line I, I ought to be able to chuck this thing a mile all right the only thing uh, left now is uh, let's go catch some fish okay so we're gonna go see if we can't catch uh, something with this and um, the only thing I haven't done yet that I'm going to do is is uh, red out the face of, of this lure right here. Um, probably just going to use uh, nail polish or something like that, but uh, I really don't see that being that big of a deal. I mean, I don't think it's going to be a deal breaker for uh, a fish uh, being attracted to this lure. It, it will help, but, uh, you know, fish hungry, he, he's not going to not 
be attracted to this or strike that because uh, it doesn't have the red on the face. But uh, I will do that uh, here shortly, but uh, I'm really anxious to go out and see if, uh, see if I can catch something with this. So um, we don't really have favorable conditions uh, right now. We, we've got a low pressure system out there. It's a tropical storm or hurricane. Uh, the winds are blowing quite a bit, which, first of all, is gonna gonna chop the water up quite a bit. And you know, it's been my experience that uh, top water poppers, top water baits, for for that matter, uh, just just work quite a bit better uh, when the surface of the water is still. But uh, you know, you never know. I mean, as soon as you think you you have fish figured out you get a pattern it, it's completely different so it, it's it's not favorable uh we do have a little bit of cloud cover which is good a lot better than a direct sunlight but uh, uh I, I've, I've had quite a bit of success in this little lake that, that we're going to there's largemouth bass in there there's also uh peacock bass um, there's mine cichlids in there that are super aggressive. Anyway, we're, we're going to go see if we can catch something but before we do just tell me a little I'll let you I'm going to tell you a, a little quick bit about the setup here uh, just kind of got a little beater combo here uh, I've got an ugly stick uh, and don't get me wrong I mean I, I like the ugly sticks for what they are uh, for, for the price point uh, I, I don't think you can beat them it's a rod you can you can beat up and, and not worry that much about but it, it, it performs uh, quite well uh, I do like them in general uh, fishing with a fluga president here I've had a couple two or three of these for years and years and uh, like I said, it's it's more or less just kind of a, a, a beater rod that uh, you really don't you don't worry too much about. They're they're cheap enough, but they perform well. I've got it spooled up with, I believe this is 15 pound Power Pro, and then uh, I've I've got uh, a, a piece of uh, 15 pound fluorocarbon here, tied in with an FG knot or improved FG knot. And then uh, down to the lure, I have an improved clinch knot. So uh, setup's good. I think I can cast this thing a mile. And uh, we're going to go hit the lake real quick and, and see, if we, uh, see, if we can't, see if we can't catch a little something. All right, we'll be back with y'all in a bit. Peace.